Good day, family. This is Pastor Hilton, and you are watching Restored Life. And this is a program of Family Restoration Center, Beaufort West. I'm so excited because today I'm going to share my heart with you. I'm going to share uh, my heart, and I believe it's a need in the body. I've written a book called God Made the Suitable Help from Above. And in this book, I have believed the Holy Spirit led me to write and this was the assignment when God allowed me to write this book. He said, son, I want you to write uh, your life story. I want you to go and warn my people because many are set up in wrong relationships. And that's the strategy the enemy used to abort their destinies. You see, when you marry wrong, your end will be wrong because you will never become all God intends you to be. You will never fulfill God's purpose. And so I've written this book, God Made the Suitable Help from Above. And we are, have been doing for these past years relationship summits uh, all over in the Northern Cape, Western Cape, even here in Cape Town. We are having one at the end of June, June 30th and the 1st of July, we are having a relationship summit in Cape Town, but I want to encourage you and I really want to talk to you. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 2 verse 18, and God made Adam fall into a deep sleep and God took one of his ribs and God made Eve. So when we talk about a God made, we're talking about someone that God has made that is suitable to help you, Adam, fulfill your purpose. Because God God never gave Adam a partner first. He first gave him purpose, meaning Adam first had to work the garden before Adam got a partner. What is the partner's role and why did God say it? it's not good for Adam to be alone? God made him Eve, God made Eve a suitable helper to help him fulfill God's purpose in the earth, meaning with the garden. Adam named all the animals. And so one need to understand the enemy's main thing is to set you up for a wrong relationship and when you marry wrong your destiny is aborted there are many men that are crying at night because they have married wrong you see not every marriage is a godly marriage because not every marriage are born of god because most of the times people go and stand at the altar and they marry for sex they marry for money they marry because of a child but they never marry because they of purpose understand God as a plan for me you need to understand that there is threefold purpose why one should marry this is counseling for you that want to get married right now hear me you don't marry because you have a child you don't marry because of sex you don't marry because of money you marry because you understand that God is a plan for us you marry because of purpose you marry because you know that this relationship between me and my husband not me and my men me and my husband me and my wife listen here must portray the relationship of Christ towards the church the Bible says in Ephesians husband loves your wives as Christ loved the church so a husband are to lay his life down if you are not there sir if you are not willing to sacrifice for her give up your life for her you are not ready for marriage Woman, you need to respect your husbands. God don't call a woman to love a husband. He call a woman to respect and submit, meaning you have to listen to his instructions and follow because you are the suitable helper. So now we're talking about God made the suitable help from above. Many people settle for less because they marry wrong.
Many people settle for less because they marry wrong. They don't understand that life is all about purpose. When we die one day, we'll have to give an account for what God has sent us to do in the earth. You, you, you will not give an account about the nice house and the nice car and, and, and where you live and what you have in your bank account. You will give an account for what He has created you. He is your creator. He has created you for a purpose. And so one must understand when you get married you must get married to the right partner the right partner there is someone that is suitable for you Adam there is a rib one rib God did not take ten only one rib and he made Eve and Eve was the suitable help for Adam so any relationship that does not end up in marriage is not from God. It's not God's plan. You know, today people are loving together and they make as if it is right. People are engaged for 10 years, 20 years, three children. They, they don't waste your time. When I talk about uh, God made, when I talk, when you are dating one year, you should already decided to marry. Because you can't have five children and don't, don't get married. He's wasting your time. You can't be engaged for five years and, and not getting married. Hear me. What the problem is with this generation is we want to put a lot of money in the celebration instead of investing in the marriage. You want to pay for the wall and pay for all those food and all those things and the clothes, a lot of money. But you don't invest in marriage. You see, right now, while you're dating, while you're courting, go to, to marriage seminars. Go and look for a couple that can mentor you, that can teach you about the marital life. Marital life he has a purpose. God, when He created marriage, he, he created marriage for this reason. The marriage is for God's purpose, is to bring off a godly offspring. This relationship must portray the relationship between Christ and His church. So my assignment in doing this relationship summit is to warn the people, to warn this generation that the enemy sets you up with the wrong relationship. Can I do, uh, explain? Samson, Samson was called by God. Samson was a mighty man of God. He is assigned to deliver the Israelites from the Philistines. And you know what? Just one wrong relationship. Let him die before his time. Let him lose his vision. Let him lose his strength. And one wrong relationship can let you abort your destiny, lose the call of God. There are many pastors, many leaders that are frustrated because they are married wrong. They were hasty. They married wrong. Many people are frustrated because they married wrong. Only God can make your wrong a right. Because it is God that makes all things work together for good. You must return to Him. Be honest with Him with where you are. In the book of 2 Samuel chapter 11 verse 1, the Bible says, In spring, at the time kings go off to war, David set Joab out with the king's men and the Israel army, but David remained in Jerusalem. That is the biggest mistake King David made in his life. Hear me. And this is how the enemy sets us up. When we don't do what we're supposed to do, the enemy will set you up for a trip. David David is the king and he's supposed to go to war. But David is not going to war. David right now decides to stay at home. And as David stayed at home and go out on the roof, there he saw Bathsheba bathing her. And David was tempted and he fall into that temptation. And you know what? He slept with Bathsheba. He killed her husband. Why? Because the enemy has set a trap for him to abort his destiny so that he can lose the call of God upon his life. The enemy still work like that today. There are many young men that are bound in wrong relationships. There are many young women that are bound. 
A trap is the hidden trick of the enemy to take you captive, to take you as a prisoner. Only when we learn how to recognize traps, we can learn to avoid them. Satan uses people in the world to set traps for other people. So does God use people to help people. And this one you need to understand. The lack of God's word makes one an easy target for the enemy's traps. Can I talk with you? There are relationship mistakes that I want to talk to you today about. The first mistake singles make is they look for a partner instead of purpose. You will marry wrong if you don't know God's purpose for your life. God's purpose for your life will reveal who you must marry, who is suitable for you. But what we do today is we rush into relationship first without knowing God's purpose for our life. And that's why our divorce rate is high because people are marrying wrong. They are marrying for the wrong reasons. Are you hearing me? The Second mistake singles make is, you see, singleness is a discovering journey. When you are single, you are supposed to uh, develop you, equip you, empower you, hear me, grow you, and discover what God has called you, meaning you discover your purpose. When you know your purpose, you will know who to marry. And this is the problem. Instead, now singles play instead of praying. Anything you want from God, you can only get with intimacy. God only reveals secrets to those who finds him in the secret place. So you got to be connected to God. If you want your God made, the suitable help from above, the one that God took and God made to help you become all your danger to be, you need to be in an intimate relationship with God. People today want God's best for their lives, but they don't want nothing to do with him. And that is the problem. So the second mistake singles make is that singles play instead of pray. Play. <laughs> and the one guy said to me, Pastor, I'm too young, man. I can't be in serious relationship. I have to go eat by Kentucky. Go have to go to Nando's. Have to go everywhere before I can make a serious decision. <laughs> Do you know that how many people are in hospital because they've played? How many people have lost their lives because they've played? Marriage is holy and marriage is serious. You got to know God's purpose first, then you know who to marry. So stop playing and start praying. You need to pray for God's best. You need to pray for the partner that God has created you to marry one day. While you are single, you still have to pray. You have to pray the thing, call upon the things that are not as they is, because you know, it's a lifetime commitment. If you marry wrong, you'll be frustrated and unhappy for the rest of your life. That's why many people marry only one month, only three months, then they get divorced because they marry wrong. Marriage is serious, so the old man has said, does not pay a good knee. Any relationship that does not end up to marriage is not a godly relationship because God, when Jesus came, he came to this woman at the well. He asked her, where is your boyfriend? No, he asked her, where is your husband? Marriage is registered in heaven, acknowledged by heaven because it's God's idea and not man's idea. The third mistake that singles make is, I don't know, the Bible says, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world. Unholy dressing. You see, there are women that reveal their bodies that are dressing so that everybody can look. If your body is holy, it's the place of the, uh, the, the temple of the Holy Ghost, then you need to cover yourself and preserve yourself for your husband. Not so it to every man that will desire it. Unholy dressing robs you from getting God's best for your life. Unholy dressing robs you. There are many men in church that have fallen because of a sister that has just not dressed right. I call it unholy dressing because the eyes 
are moved by what it sees. And this is why God has a great call. He says, do not conform to the patterns of this world. As a believer, you cannot dress like this world. You cannot. You cannot. The fourth mistake singles make is they look at charisma more than character. Charisma. You are looking at how the hair is and how the eyes is and what he drives and what is in his bank account. But the guy got no character. Any man that does not God's purpose are not ready for marriage. They does not know because they will only lead you astray. They will lead you in the desert for 40 years. So when you marry or want to get married, get a man that knows God's purpose. Knows God's purpose. Knows God's purpose. One need to understand this. The fifth thing that singles do is, and mostly in church we get it, they, they date and they are unequally yoked. While God says the light and the darkness have no friendship. And that's why your fire is burnt out. Your fire is being killed. You are on fire of God, but now that you are dating John, they don't know God, that is smoking and drinking, you become cold, grow cold, grow lukewarm. God says, do not be unequally yoked. This is what Samson's parents ask him, why don't you marry one of us? And Samson was bitter and angry because his father-in-law gave his wife to his best man. We are talking about relationships and I've come to say with you tonight, there is someone that God has made for you. Someone that is suitable. Someone that will bring the best out in you. While you see a God made brings the best out in you. While Satan's made bring the stress out in you. You choose. You decide who you want to marry. You decide. God only presents her and you decide. One need to understand this. Understand this. There are so many mistakes we can talk about, but like I said, the 30th of June and the 1st of July, we are in Cape Town, in Melton Rose, in Vata Road Street. We are at, um, what is this church name now? Cutting Edge Ministries. We'll be at Cutting Edge Ministries doing the Relationship Summit. You don't want to miss this. You don't want to miss this. The, 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 the thing that really robs us and brings a curse uh, on our young people is sex before marriage. Sex before marriage brings a curse and it's not God's will. And as a church, we have to talk about it. Today, uh, youngsters are living as if it is right. It, it, is, it, it is right if you have a child before wedlock. It's not right. It's not pleasing unto God. It is wrong. God is not pleased with that. Loving together is more uh, preferred these days than getting married. That is wrong. That is not pleasing unto God. If you are a child of God, you have to do things right. You have to do what pleases God. You see, this is the problem we are sitting with. And if we are going to build a godly generation, we'll have to build according to God's pattern and God's word. God has a pattern for relationships. He has a pattern for marriage. He has a pattern. And this is how we're supposed to build. A God made is not found. A God made, listen here, is made by God. What would have happened if Adam go searching? Go searching for a partner. This is the problem. Solomon says, when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. This is Solomon. He has written uh, Proverbs and we know. But how did his life end? How did his story end? The Bible says that foreign women turned his heart away from God. This wise man, his end was poor because he married wrong. He married thousand wives. They took his heart from God. So you cannot follow his advice. Adam never looked for a partner. 
in a never. The Bible says he was alone. God said it is not good for men to be alone. And God made a suitable yapa for Adam. When Adam saw Eve, he said, bone of my bone. It means when you choose a partner, you have to choose someone that has the same co compatibilities. You have the same likings. Are you hearing me? And most of the times you can't marry someone that is going to Joburg and you are going to Takaru or to Weinberg. There must be compatibilities. You must have the things that you like together. Family, I want to encourage you. If you are in Easter River, if you are wherever around, I want you to come and join us the 30th of June at um, Cutting Edge Ministries in Water Road Street in Melton Rose. Me and my team from Beaufort West will be here and we'll be talking about relationships. We'll talk about mistakes singles make. We'll talk about mistakes couples make, mistakes divorces make. We'll talk about a lot of things, soul ties. We'll talk and I would like to invite you just to come and enjoy God's presence. We're going to have a blessed time. Watch social media and and then we can talk from there. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen.